my name is Pinar. Uh, I'm from the Luxembourg Center for Systems Biomedicine. Uh, I'm going to talk today about our tool called DAISY, Data Information System. It's a tool to record biomedical research data for accountability under the GDPR. So, if you're working with biosamples and data from living human subjects, the GDPR has an effect on your operation. Uh, this comes as a surprise to some researchers, but uh, yeah, uh, it has impacts to research. Uh, so uh, the GDPR has come into force for more than a year now, and uh, it has six principles. Uh, it requires you to process data about people lawfully in a fair manner and in a transparent manner. Uh, you need to keep accurate information about people. You need to use it only for the purpose you collect it. Um, uh, you need to only keep the data that you need and nothing more. Uh, you can only keep data for a limited amount of time, and you need to secure the data. You need to uh, uh, assure confidentiality and integrity. integrity. So we have, uh, so GDPR outlines all these six principles and then says you will be expected to demonstrate that you are compliant with these principles, and this is where our tool supports. So the controller, which is essentially in this case the research PI, uh, is responsible for demonstrating that you are doing this in your work. So, what does that mean for a research institution? So, when the day for the dreaded GDPR audit comes, uh, you will be, the, the institute will be asked these three questions. What data do you have? What human data do you have? Uh, uh, so, for that you need to know which groups have which data and so on. Um, what is the legal ground for having that data? And there can be different legal grounds. You might be running a cohort, so that's consent-based uh, legal ground. Or you may have received the data from a repository, so you have a data use agreement with the repository. Or you may have received it from a collaborator, so you have an agreement with that. And you need to answer for how you are protecting the data. So this could be organizational measures or technical. So it, you can encrypt the files, you can do pseudonymization, or you can do trainings, you can have a code of conduct for your admins, but you need to show to the auditor that you're doing all this. Uh, so this has kind of uh, caused the business of uh, GDPR data mapping uh, to come up. So if you go and search the web on GDPR data mapping, you'll see some, a number of tools that allow you to do documentation about all of this. Um, and, and people have, you know, some, some institutes, universities have started, you know, deploying these things to answer for what data they have. Uh, well, with or without a tool, data mapping is a very difficult exercise uh, because it requires multiple parties. Um, so the researchers know what projects they're running and what data they have. The legal team know what contracts have been signed and with which, which partners and what's their expiry and if they have the GDPR clauses. And the IT team knows which platform is secured in what way. So essentially what you need is, a, is uh, to bring all this information together. And without a tool, it's essentially a bunch of Excel files in different parts of the institute and a bunch of emails going around between people um, and documents. Um, so the existing GDPR tools, what they do is they're quite generic and process oriented. So let's say I'm a university, I'm trying to document what I'm doing, and uh, it, it, it allows you, it, it views the world in terms of processes. So I would say as a university, I have a student recruitment process, I get application forms, and then I, um, and I generate uh, a database. So I, I have this process and I run it uh, like a thousand times, it doesn't change. But this doesn't really apply for research because research runs over projects. So data information system talks the, the researcher's language for representing their work with human data. It, it allows you to record projects, the data that you have in those projects, partners which are the source or the recipient of data, contracts and cohorts. Uh, it has this view and very, very essential GDPR jargon. Uh, so we have already deployed it in, in the LCSP, so we have our own list of uh, index of PIs and what data they have. Uh, so uh, this is essentially a, a, a bunch of web forms uh, that would allow you to record this information. It would ping you to 
provide GDPR critical information like the ethics approval. Why do you not have the ethics approval? Also, um, the storage location platforms for the data. If you share the data without, uh, with, uh, with a third party country, where, where did it go? These kinds of information. Also, it tracks uh, storage end dates and use restrictions using GA4GH codes. Uh, I have a, a poster still up there. We had very, very tough competition yesterday because our very important GDPR topic was placed next to the wizard with the fancy visualization. So we had tough competition. Uh, the, source, uh, the, the, the source code has been put up three months ago and we're now acting, actively working for a release uh, in August. Uh, we are in the process of deploying this in two, uh, two institutes in Luxembourg and another one and another Elixir node internationally. And this is a team, you know, uh, putting their time from now, from now and then. Uh, it's, it's a big team effort, so thanks to the team. Thank you.